If everything goes as planned, 2027 will see the launch of one of the most exciting space missions of the 21st century thus far. Yes, NASA is sending humans back to the moon, and we continue to look at Mars as a potential second home. But the Dragonfly probe is headed all the way to Saturn's moon Titan, but with such a high price tag, what can we expect it to discover? Welcome to ZE. And today we're discussing the extraordinary issue of why NASA is spending a billion dollars on a single Titan probe. Do you need answers to huge questions? Are you always curious? Then why not subscribe to Z for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. NASA plans to launch it in June 2027. The Dragonfly rotorcraft is expected to arrive on Titan's surface in 2034, landing in the Shangri-La dune fields and then flying towards the Selk crater, which scientists believe will contain a mix of organic compounds and water ice ejected from the moon's interior. This baseline mission is scheduled to last 32 months, but as we know from prior probe missions, they can run much longer depending on well the equipment holds up. Rover, for example, was launched in 2003 with a three-month mission duration on Mars but ended up operating for 15 years, so it's not beyond the realm of possibility that Dragonfly will achieve a similar feat providing key information long into the future right now. However, at the very start of its journey and long before it's gotten off the ground, the progress reports surrounding Dragonfly are also read with budget in mind with AR Dragonfly, will be the second rotorcraft to fly on a celestial body, the first being Ingenuity on Mars, which has been a resounding success since its deployment in 2021. Our Titan craft is much larger than Ingenuity, though closer to the size of a full ground-based rover, about the size of a small car, with a quad rotor with double blades, meaning that there are eight dragonflies in total, really somewhere between a drone and a helicopter. The extra rotors will also help it. Dragonfly's power source will be a nuclear battery called an RTG, a radioisotope thermoelectric generator and these have actually been used in space missions before Dragonfly needs a nuclear power source specifically, because Titan its destination is so far from the Sun. Although this is somewhat similar to the setup for the Mars rovers as Curiosity and Perseverance had RTGS installed getting to, Saturn takes at least three years, while some journeys, such as Dragonflies, can take up to seven years because to the very distances between Saturn and Earth required to gain enough velocity for its journey. Dragonfly will need to pass by Earth three further times to boost its speed, and it will perform a flyby of Venus too. Clearly it's extremely difficult then to get to Titan only after these gravity assists. Will it head towards the outer solar system so why bother couldn't we spend the time and money required for the mission on something else like further Martian or lunar projects these could feasibly lead to a permanent human presence on an alien world far sooner but still Titan gets the nod. Ultimately Titan is phenomenally interesting in its own right and potentially crucial for the future it's Saturn's largest moon, and unlike the moons of Mars and Earth we know it has surface liquid in fact Titan has huge lakes, although you couldn't drink from them as they are made of liquid methane and ethane not water still as toxic, as methane would be if you tried to consume it there's nothing like this on any other body in the solar system other than Earth, while other bodies have water ice and some are believed to have subsurface oceans of water Titan surface liquid makes it unique and what's more it does have the more traditional water ice as well, so there may well be a reliable water source should we ever need it as well as that Titan has a very dense atmosphere in fact it's so dense that until Cassini flew by it in the mid-2000s, we didn't actually know about those liquid lakes at all the thick atmosphere is why in images from space Titan looks flat and featureless, and why it wasn't until quite recently that it became a primary target of interest for NASA and others during its mission Cassini launched the European Space Agency's Heigenlander, which returned photos from Titan's surface, indicating Titan's tremendous potential. Hygens was a success, however it only lasted a few hours before running out of battery power, as predicted. Dragonfly is something of a follow-up then set to be totally different. And with a much longer mandate Dragonfly will be equipped with many scientific instruments including a mass spectrometer a seismometer, and a variety of cameras this will help watching researchers to study the chemical makeup of the moon, and potentially to see if Titan might hold some kind of microbial life of course this would be the holy grail, and something the chances are high it's not as though Titan could be described 
as Earth-like exactly, but we know from studies on Earth that it is possible for creatures to exist in certain environments that we usually consider inhospitable like on the underside of Glacier for example compared to most of the rest of the solar system Titan appears to have a reasonable grounding for similarly unusual life to potentially take hold. And if it has then Dragonfly is tasked with finding it any life forms Dragonfly might discover would need to be adapted to some seriously weird conditions however Titan does have a weather system something like ours. But again it relies on methane rather than water with methane rain as well as rivers and valleys forged by it. And large dunes the surface temperature of Titan is vastly different and much lower than here on Earth. Which is something NASA kept in mind while designing the probe. On average, it's minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit, which is far colder than the record lowest natural temperature ever recorded on Earth, minus 128.6 degrees. This means it's more than twice as cold on Titan as it is in Antarctica, which is why methane and ethane, which are normally gases on our planet, can instead form in vast quantities Titan's largest lake, the aptly named Kraken Mare, is larger than the Caspian Sea on Earth and nearly the size of all five Great Lakes combined. During its time there, Dragonfly may be able to move close to these strange bodies of liquid to take images of them, which would be astounding and a major moment for space study elsewhere. Titan's dense atmosphere, while cold, will also provide a benefit, helping to protect Dragonfly from solar radiation Ul Titan has less gravity than even the Moon, making any hypothetical visit by humans very difficult, especially since to make a years-long journey to Titan worthwhile. Those humans would need to live there for a long time, perhaps indefinitely, and creating artificial gravity on a planetary body is something that is currently beyond us, so perhaps those humans would need to be. Based on an off-Titan orbital station from which they could visit Titan. These are all things that Dragonfly will hopefully help us comprehend and possibly even plan for once its mission begins. So, what do you think Dragonfly will find when it lands on this strange world, how do you think the mission will affect our future, and everything in between? What are your thoughts on the $1 billion price tag? Let us know through the comments section below. NASA is definitely not taking things by halves and is committed to exploring this specific solar system body. And while $1 billion is undoubtedly significant, it is also not that rare in the field of space exploration. Rover to Mars costs more than double that, coming in at $2.4 billion. While NASA's renewed lunar program Artemis has an estimated an eye-watering budget of $93 billion. There is always the possibility that the cost will balloon as the mission continues to develop, especially if it is delayed, as NASA launches are frequently, but those variables can't yet be known. There is no doubt about the return on investment. Titan is expected to be incredibly resource-rich, with immense quantities of oil and natural gas. It also offers enormous potential for wind and tidal power if we finally move by the time we get there. Aside from fossil fuels according to some predictions, Titan might become the solar system's energy center if humanity eventually begins to inhabit other worlds. Obviously, there's a long way to go before that happens, but this may be recognized as a crucial early research by some standards. Titan is the most Earth-like non-Earth body in our entire star system, more promising than our nearest neighbors such as the Moon, Mars, or Venus, and it could prove to be an important part of our species' future, which is why NASA is spending $1 billion on a single probe to it. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.